Hey, Dustin here from Retro Supply, and as you know, spring is here and summer is right around the corner, and that means concerts and barbecue and all sorts of good stuff like that, and if you're a designer, that probably means that you're going to be making things with more of an organic or handmade feel, um, which means that things like wood type and those inky woodsy textures are fantastic for this time of year, so I thought it was a good time to make a tutorial that showed you exactly how to do that. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how to create what you're looking at right here on your screen. And the coolest part is I'm including everything you need to do this. So I'm going to include the Photoshop styles, the brushes, the a link to the font that I'm using, the artwork that you see in the background, and the splatters that you see on top. Everything I'm going to include links to right below so you can just download this totally free and play with it use it on this project, use it however you want. And if you want to upgrade and really kind of up your game with tons of these kind of textures for your projects, we just released the wood and ink pack from Retro Supply and it includes 20 wood and ink Photoshop styles that instantly add textures to your work. These were all just plain black before and just by clicking a button, they get these beautiful textures on them. You're going to get wood block brushes so you can kind of do these beautiful layering things with wood block textures. You're going to get 15 gigantic seamless ink textures. They're 2000 by 2000 pix pixel seamless textures. And you're going to get authentic retro paper textures that are made from paper that I aged through a special process I have. And then I forgot about them for two years. So they literally on top of being like fake aged, they became truly aged because they sat in boxes aging for years. And those are also high resolution. Most exciting of all, I'm totally giving this away for free. We have this beautiful new font from Scott Fuller called Firebox. We're releasing this in a week or two at a retail price of $15, but just to celebrate the release of this pack for a very limited time, when you buy the pack, you're going to get this font in the file, 100% free included with it, and it has full Western language support for all you know Western European languages. So I'm really excited about offering that with this pack. And of course, we include brushes. Retro Supply is really well known for brushes, so we're including some subtle ink spray brushes, ink splatter brushes, wood blocks, ink, search, ink circles, which are fantastic for adding logos or letters or numbers inside, as well as ink squares, decorative elements, and one of my favorites, paper folds, which are great for adding you know, folds to your work, obviously, but they're also great for distressing just the very edges of lines of letters and things like that. And I will show you exactly how to do that in this tutorial. So let's get started with the tutorial. So once again, this is what we're creating. So the first step is to download the font. And you can find the font at fontsquirrel.com forward slash fonts forward slash league dash gothic. You can Google that and find it really easily. Um, but it's a font that really lends itself to this kind of work and you can literally just click this button and download it. It's um, totally free to download. Of course, pay attention to the license, read the license if you wanna use it in commercial work, but you can play around with it for free for things like this project, for instance. So once you have that font, download the font. So it's working in Illustrator and Photoshop. And then I used it to create some type like this, and basically what I did is I just kind of moved the different letters around, you know, made some higher and some lower, um, and created this look. And then I converted it all to outlines. So I'm just going to press Command C and copy this, and I'm going to paste this into Photoshop. So I'll paste it in here. And then by holding Shift and Option Alt, Shift, Option, Shift, Alt, call it whatever you want. Um, I can adjust it and keep it right in the center. I'll press enter and keep that. And now let's load up the free styles. So just go to, first of all, we're in the styles panel here. And if you can't see that, you can go to window styles and open that window. And then we're just going to click this drop down and click load styles. Go to your wood and ink sample pack, click on the wood and ink style sample, press open. And as you can see, it just added it right here. Now, these are one of my favorite parts about the pack and check out how amazing these are. So I've highlighted the layer with the text on it and I can just click and instantly you get this beautiful texture of wood and ink added to your work. And here's another one and you get a little bit darker one. And of course, when you buy the full pack, you get tons of these that you can use, um, so many different kinds and each one is 100% customizable. 
So you can change the color, you can change the grain of the pattern, you can change the intensity of the ink on the edges, like to increase the um, pressure at which the ink was put down. So a lot of fun. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go to Illustrator and we are going to open up the artwork for the background. So if you go to the freebie pack, the sample pack, you can just find this file called Cabin by the Lake. And if you right click on it and just say open with Adobe Illustrator, here it is. And I'm just going to Command C, select it and press Command C. And I'm going to press Command V and paste it in here. And then again, I'm pressing Shift Alt and adjusting this down to the size that I want. Looks good. And then I'm going to press command left bracket to send that layer to the back. Okay, awesome. So as it is, this looks awesome with this black ink and the blue background, but let's say we want to change the color. We could easily just go to this layer with the letters on it and click color overlay, and then just select this color right here and we can choose a color to put on top of it. So I like to make them nice and intense colors. So do that, press okay. And then once I have it how I like it, I like to convert the layer style, and I'm just doing this by right clicking. I right click on this, rasterize layer style. And here is a really cool part. So by dropping down on this blending modes panel, I can select linear burn for this top layer with the font and watch what happens to how it interacts with the background layer of the illustration. Cool, right? So it just like has this beautiful mix where when the red and blue hit each other, they make almost like a deep purple or almost like a black. It creates a beautiful effect, looks fantastic on posters, and we've still maintained our textures. So that's pretty awesome. Next, let's distress like I was talking about the edges of our typography. We have our brush selected, and the first thing we wanna do is make a layer mask. And a layer mask is a non-destructive way of adding texture or taking away from a layer without deleting things. So with this layer selected, I'm just going to go down here and click add layer mask. And now you wanna make sure that your colors, your foreground and background color are set to black and white. And just remember black conceals, white reveals. So we're going to go up here, select our brush panel, select this little gear icon and say load brushes. Go to our freebie pack again and as you can see the .abr file which is brushes is all highlighted and ready to be used. Click open and the brushes have been added. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this RSCO wooden ink 05 brush and it's a humongous fold brush and the reason I make it so big is so you can use it on really big projects, um, you know, sometimes brushes are so small, you're like, how do I ever use these? They're too small, but these are really big. So we've already created our layer mask, have it set to black, and now watch how we use this. This is pretty cool. So I can just go along these edges and just like click there on it. And you see how it's like creating like just, just slightly roughened edge along the letters. And if we want to get like these angled areas, it's really easy too. You just open up this brush panel here and you click on angle, bring your brush over by where you want to use it like on this W and I'm just pressing up and you can see the angle is changing. And once I have it at an angle I like, go back a little, just do that and I can add this texture. So you can do that as much or as little as you'd like, but I'm going to call it good with that. So second, the other brush we have is RSCO Wooden Ink 07, and this is more of a subtle grain brush, and we can just make this small, and we could add like a little bit more texture to our lettering here. This also works great on the background. Again, we can just select the next layer, the blue layer, and then do add layer mask. Make sure we have black. And then we can just click and add like a little bit of texture to this. Okay, 
And the final thing I want to do is I want to add an ink splatter to this. So we just go up to File, Place in Bed, or if you're in an older version, it'll just say Place. Find the freebie pack, and then I'm just going to select the ink splatter and press Place. Now these are transparent PNGs, so you don't have to worry about like trying to isolate the black, it's already isolated. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then again, layer masks are our friends. So I'm gonna click on this layer mask, and then I'm going to choose just a round circle brush that comes default with Photoshop, and I'm going to shrink it down by clicking on the left bracket and that just makes it smaller and smaller. And with it set to black to conceal, I can just start painting where I don't want these spots. And mostly where I don't want them is on top of the letters. I really want to emphasize the word and not the ink spots. Okay, so there you have it. That is our final design. This could be the beginning of a poster, the top of a menu, um, a playbill, a business card. There's so many different ways that you can use this. So I hope you found this useful. Have fun with the freebies. And like I mentioned before, if you do want to level it up and get an even more um, just packed to the gills pack of textures and brushes and goodies, you can get that here. And you also can still get the free font um, if you purchase that today. So thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you soon.